Hello, my name is Mary Kay and thank you so much for stopping by and thank you for 1.7k subscribers. So without further ado, let's dive in. Today we are going to be making this cardigan. I used three patterns as I'm going to explain further uh, in the video and i decided to just have it with this raggedy look without uh finishing off the edges or the sides or the neck or the bottom so you have three ways of wearing this cardigan you have the first way the way i'm wearing it the second way adding the rim at the bottom like the hands to cinch it in the third way is what i am doing right now where you could uh, use either a brush or just connect it permanently with your yarn and just wear it from the top um i love it and i hope you do too so let's go ahead and um, make it i can't wait to see your creations and your additions and the patterns that you use and the colors so let's dive in enjoy i'm using winter king for fly a 3.5 millimeter hook and first things first you're going to make a slip knot and um if you're new here we don't work on chaining row alone we work on the chaining row and the first row together because it's easier that way and as much as it's easier it's also time saving and you're going to um know why so like i said at the beginning of the video we are working with three patterns the bubble stitch uh the alpine stitch and then the pretty pattern that i don't know the name of so step one we're going to chain three uh by this point this is where now <clears throat> we're going to be working from the bottom upwards uh so the length from one shoulder to the other part of the shoulder uh that is the length that you're going to be making Personally, I made around 18 inches because I needed it a bit buggy on my body. Uh, but since this is a sample, I'm only going to work with a few uh, stitches around 10 to 15. So after you've changed your three, you're going to yarn over. Um, you insert your hook in the very first stitch that you made. Yarn over, pull through. You're going to have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first one, which counts as the chaining row. Then yarn over and make your normal half double. Simple as that. Now, the next uh, stitch, you're going to twist your work. At the very end, you're going to see some two loops. So you yarn over because half double. Insert your hook in the very two loops at the end, at this side. Once you have them, yarn over and pull through everything. Three loops on your hook. Again, first things first, the chaining row, which you yarn over and pull through just the first one. Then you're going to have your three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through everything to make your half double. Again, yarn over, twist your work. You're going to find some two loops at the very end. Insert your hook in those two loops after you've yarned over, yarn over again, pull through everything. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first one, that is the chaining row, then yarn over and pull through everything. So, what I mean is, we are working from corner to corner so the length that you need you're going to need the length from you're going to need to know the length from one side to the other side that way we're going to be working from the bottom upwards and on my cardigan i started with a bubble stitch because i'm making the back panel first I started with the bubble stitch, followed by the pretty stitch, followed by the alpine stitch, and that and that will be the order that I show you how we get to do this. So once you have your measurements from one side to the other, that is the length that you're going to start with. So I have my 15 stitches. We're going to start now. This is um I would say our foundation chain. Um, no, it's not a chain. This is our foundation row. This is how we're going to start the back panel, which is what, uh, 
I started with. So this is how we're going to start the back panel and the two front panels and the two hands. You first of all make this chain. This gives way for you to start now working on uh, on your pattern. Now what you do, you're going to chain two after you get to the length that you need. Now a bubble stitch, you can work um using half doubles or just normal double crochets as for me i prefer the double half doubles so that is what i'm going to show you here today so you chain two um of course we're not going to start by making the uh, bubble stitch on the very first row so we're going to start off uh, by making a half double so yarn over insert your hook then yarn over pull through three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through everything and that is how you make a half double now um we're going to start by making by putting half double and then bubble stitch and then you're going to skip three and then we put a bubble stitch skip three a bubble stitch now the reason you're not putting a bubble stitch at the very end is because you don't want our work pulling to this side because um a bubble stitch is basically a lot of stitches in one stitch so let's just do that so bubble stitch yarn over insert your hook in the next stitch yarn over pull through you're going to have three loops on your hook you're going to yarn over and pull through just the first two then yarn over again in the same same stitch insert your hook yarn over pull through you're going to yarn over and pull through the next two stitches yarn over insert your hook in the same same stitch and over pull through yarn over and pull through just two loops just through the two loops like that and then you're going to yarn over insert your hook in the same stitch yarn over pull through two loops one two three four five that means you've gone four times and you're going to go five times yarn over insert your hook in the very very same stitch yarn over pull through and then you yarn over and pull through two stitches now you uh you have six loops on your hook now if you go four times you're going to have five stitches five loops on your Hook. now you can go as many times as you want and the more times that you, the more times you go the bigger your bubble is going to be now once you have all the number of loops that you need you're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops you have to be careful not to let go of them once you have that you can pull it inside using your finger and then Pull it tight, yarn over, and proceed. Now, like I said, we're going to uh, put half doubles in the next three stitches. One thing you also have to be careful about is you don't skip the next stitch as it could be covered by the bubble stitch. So, you check and double check and then you insert your first half double. And then your second half double and then your third half double now after the three once again we put our second bubble stitch yarn over insert your hook in the stitch yarn over pull through three loops on your hook yarn over through just the first two as if you're making a double crochet now ignore the two, yarn over, same stitch again, just the two and repeat the process until you have the same amount of loops that you had on the first bubble stitch and that is the only thing you're going to keep repeating. So once you have either six like me or more or less depending with what you want, you yarn over and pull through everything being careful not to let go. At the end after I put my three loops I have two extra loops remaining so I'm going to put a bubble stitch and then the last loop now uh, this is quite important if you put your three loops and then you have one extra loop remaining 
for you to get to the end of your row don't put your bubble stitch if you don't have um, a finishing half double just put the half double turn your work and then you just proceed but now because i have a finishing half double after i put my bubble stitch then i'm going to proceed and put my stitch now at the end what you do you're going to chain two you have two options either make this a two row repeat or a three row repeat but now to make it a two row repeat what you're going to do is you're going to make we're going to put a row of double half doubles all the way through so that it takes us back to the right side of our bubble stitches and then we can decide whether you want to do a two row repeat or a three row repeat half doubles all the way through and i'll meet you on the other side now we we have our two row repeat and by row repeat i mean we have the first row the bubble stitch row and then we have the plain half double row you have now two options option one is copy and paste the first row the bubble stitch row copy and paste it on the third uh, row on the next row or you can switch things up a little bit instead of having the bubble stitches uh, all following each other you could change things up and um you change the positions of the bubble stitch what i mean is you could have the next bubble stitch pointing at the middle instead of them being like all following each other in a straight row they could be going in a different direction so what i mean by this is chain your two now remember in the bubble stitch row we started by chaining by putting our half double first and then we put our bubble stitch now instead of putting one half double we can put three half doubles and then put our bubble stitch next which is going now to move the bubble stitch from this point to most probably the middle of the of these two bubbles and this is what i mean first of all put your three half doubles now as you can see this part is covered we put now our bubble stitch which is going now to be at the middle of this two now repeat all that the bubble stitch thing and yeah so this is what i mean mm, instead of having them following each other you have this one in the middle of the first two and then you just continue doing that and then after now you do the uh the plain half double rows in the next row you're going to go back to what you did in the first row if you choose to go with this method if not then you just continue putting one half double and then a bubble stitch and then you just proceed but if you want a three row repeat the first bubble stitch row is going to be a one double one half double then a bubble then a plain row then in the next bubble row is going to be three half doubles then a bubble so i really hope you're getting that um i'm going to finish this one to the end and probably repeat this row once again so that you can see the difference and then after that you're going to go to the second pattern this is now what i meant by having a three row repeat as you can see uh the bubbles in the middle are not aligned with the bubbles at the top and the and at the bottom uh so that's what i meant uh by that so the next stitch you're going to work on is going to be the pretty stitch i don't know about because i need to show you how to transition from that stitch to the next because of the way that it's worked so you could start by either making a row of half the of uh, single crochets all the way through so that it gets us back on this side to start working or you could just continue with the same same way but i prefer putting the a row of a single crochet so that so that it brings us back to the um the right side so single crochets you just insert your hook yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through everything that is basically it 
insert your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through everything so i'm at the end and i have chained three now this is how you work this uh, beautiful pattern i'm going to yarn over insert your hook in the next stitch yarn over pull through you're going to have three loops like you do when you're making a half double yarn over pull through the first two and then yarn over and pull through the last two repeat that in the same stitch and put two more once you have the three in the same stitch you're going to count three stitches one two three on the third stitch you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull through two pull through you're going to have two loops on your hook yarn over pull through and make a single crochet now once you have that you're going to chain two one two with that you're going to yarn over and repeat and put three double crochets the same same way you did in the very first stitch three half doubles you're going to count three once again one two and on the third you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull through two loops on your hook yarn over to make your single crochet chain two and repeat now, on the very last uh, step this could have different outcomes it's not a must for it to end with three doubles on the uh, on the same same stitch uh, the determinant will be when you count the number of uh, stitches remaining after you start putting your doubles if it's three then you're going to put three loops but if it's two you're going to put two loops but if it's one you're going to put one loop insert your hook double crochet and then chain two now this is where we also have another determiner with this pattern if you're putting three loops on every the the same same stitches the way you're working you you're not going to be doing the same thing the very end of the row and the other very end of the row you have to work it differently because if you continue putting the three in at the very end on, on the right end and the left end, your work is going to progressively um, get bigger. So what we do or what I normally do, when I am starting the next row, I put two doubles at the very start. When I am finishing, I put one double. This is what I mean. So for this one, I'm going to put them uh, on the single crochet. So put your two doubles here on the single crochet. That is one and then two. Now, this is how you continue. You're going to count one, two, three. The three doubles that you put, the one that is farthest from you is the one that you're going to insert your hook under it and then pull it upwards. The one that is farthest from you when you're going to when you're working the next stitch and the one that you started with on your first row, you're going to put a half double um sorry a single crochet i really use half the ball a lot so apologies for that you're going to put your single crochet then chain two yarn over you're going to have this part that uh that has been pushed at the back which is where we're going to put our three double crochets per usual after you have your three you're going to go now to the three doubles that you put on the previous row the double that is farthest from you you're going to insert your hook and pull it upwards single crochet then chain two your three doubles in the in the stitch that has been pulled backwards i am at the end and i have my uh single crochet i'm going to chain my two as always and then like i said when i am finishing the row I put one double crochet when I am starting the next row. I put two double crochets. Now, because now I am finishing the row, I am going to put one double crochet. Chain two, turn your work. Now, you're going to see these are uh, empty loops. They, yeah, they're empty loops. This loops over here i honestly don't know what they're called i also don't know the name of the pattern i just really really love it so you're going to 
yarn over and because we're starting the row we're going to put two loops that is one double crochet and then two we are starting the row which means we start with two now again the double that is farthest from you is where you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull through again the double chain two put your three doubles all the way through to reiterate what i said i am at the end and i am going to put one double crochet now um, I'm not going to be repeating the pattern anymore because the video is becoming too long, which is not my intention. So what I am going to do is show you how to transition from the next, from this pattern to the next stitch, which the next stitch is alpine stitch. Now, first things first, you're going to chain either one or two. But one thing that you should already have in mind is the number of stitches that you started with. I personally started with 15 stitches and I prefer counting uh, these portions that look, um, I don't know, I don't know how they look. So I just count one, two, three, four, and the last one is five. And then I divide that with the number of stitches that I had, which is 15, which means I am going to get three stitches in every one of them for me to have 15 stitches because as you can see these are they're a bit more and a bit pulled so which means you have to ensure that you calculate so I need 15 stitches the same way the, the same same stitches that I started with which is what I need to have here for me to be able to continue so you're just going to put single crochets until you have the number of single crochets that you the number of stitches that you had when you started so now once you are sure that you have your the number of stitches that you started with personally i am i have my 15 rows which means now i can freely start working on my next row which is the alpine stitch row now that you know how to change up the position uh, to transition from this pattern that i don't know the name of to the next pattern which would have either been the bubble stitch or the alpine stitch we are going now to reiterate what we said about now as you can see we are on the right side and with the alpine stitch we need to have the if you're working with the double rows the double crochets or the half doubles we need them on this side you could either put the single crochets or just put the double crochets all the way to the end and get to where we are instead of the single crochets that way it's just going to put us directly above directly on the side on the right side as we are and start working now if not we could just go in with another row of single crochets which is going after that row we are going now to have to come back with a row of double crochets now that is definitely up to you but i prefer I, I first of all wanted to show you the easiest way or if you have ended on the right side you'll have to go to the wrong side and then the right side again then the single crochet would work because we would have been facing this direction and then now from here we would have to now put in our double crochets which would bring us to this side but now since you're on this side you have the option of instead of putting single crochets you just put in directly put in your double crochets this is what this is what i meant by having the double crochets because all of a sudden we are on the right side of this thing so what we do is i have already chained by one you can chain two depending on um how you wish to play it now first things first i'm going to put first double crochet just a plain double crochet now with the next stitch this is where we are going to start playing with the treble which is a yarn over twice after you yarn over twice you're going to be working now a front treble crochet crochet which means you're going to insert your hook underneath that stitch Pull it upwards, insert your hook after you've pulled it upwards, then yarn over. Once you have, you're going to yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two, yarn over, pull through the next 
2. So you're going to do that three times. Now, as you can see, we have the position where we put in our first double crochet and then we put in our front treble crochet. All right. Now, once you do that, you're going now to skip the stitch that is directly behind the treble that we did and put in your normal double crochet on the next stitch after skipping the stitch this stitch this stitch behind you after you skip that stitch you're going to put in your normal double crochet and after that now to make the next treble crochet you yarn over twice you're going to skip the stitch below your normal double crochet and go into the next stitch insert your hook underneath the stitch pull it upwards yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the next two yarn over pull through the last two now yarn over skip the stitch directly behind the treble which is this one and then and then on, on the next stitch you're going to put in your normal double crochet now i have ended up with a normal double crochet so what you do if you have two stitches remaining you're going to put in an extra double crochet the only thing that needs to end your row in short is a double crochet not a treble uh, not the front post treble crochet it's just a double crochet to ensure that your work is neat and well aligned now for the next row what you're going to do we're going to put in a row of single crochets that are going to take you back to the right side where i am going to meet you and proceed here we are again on the right side and now for this this is what we have to do the places where we didn't put our front treble crochet is where we are going to be working in so we're not going to be putting a double crochet here because we have the double crochet at the bottom which we didn't work the treble crochet in so that is where we are going to have our first treble crochet and over twice for a treble crochet and as you can see we have the normal double crochet here you're going to insert your hook as usual pull it through yarn over yarn over pull through the first two yarn over pull through the next two yarn over pull through the last two now here is the catch we're just doing the opposite of what we did in that first row of putting our treble crochets where we put the treble crochets we are putting double crochets where we put double crochets you're putting treble crochets now um directly above the first front treble crochet that we did that is where we are putting our first double crochet so of course you have to ensure that you've skipped that stitch behind the the front post treble crochet and then you put in your normal half double skip the front post treble crochet because it's been represented at the top in the normal double that you did in the last row that is where you're going to put your front post treble crochet now front post yarn over twice insert your hook on that stitch pull through then you're going to yarn over and pull through three times and that is just basically what you're going to keep doing you're going to keep alternating working from the what you didn't work in in the previous row is what you're going to work in in the next row and that is what constitutes of an alpine stitch which is what looks like this this is the alpine stitch i am not really sure if you can see it properly but that is how the alpine stitch looks like it's just a bunch of alternating and then we have that other row and then we have the bubble stitches and this is my hand now for the hand you have the option of working it like this or working it in circles now if working it in circles is the option it can work for the bubble stitch and the alpine but it cannot work for the stitch that i don't know the name of you're going to need to know the length the arm depth uh with the arm depth is how you're going to start doing this so this is mine i worked it from side to side i first of all worked these doubles side to side and then i attached all of them here this is 
the attaching row this is where I attached them because I was working from corner to corner not in circular because with this pattern it cannot work in circular okay so let me show you how to attach so before we proceed with uh, showing you how to attach this is what you're going to do after you're done making your uh, back panel you're going to make two more panels in total you're going to have three panels the back panel this is the shoulder panel and this is the other shoulder panel now once that is done you're going to attach now remember what i said about knowing the number of stitches you just you have all through that will come in handy with you determining how many stitches are equivalent to this so say for example i had 60 stitches all the way through here uh, with my 60 stitches i'm going to have e uh, an equal amount of stitches on this side and this side so if i have 15 stitches on this side i should have 15 stitches on this other side to which i see if i say 15 plus 15 I'll get 30, which means this middle part should be 30. It means that all these are going to be equal and that way you're going to be able to attach uh, the front, the back panel and the front panels without much trouble. And once you do that, uh, you're going to have to start by attaching your hand. You'll start attaching your hand all round going downwards which i find that is way easier rather than attaching the panels first and then you come to attach your hands because sometimes you could forget and instead of doing double work you just start with your hands now after you have attached the panels at the top not any other part at the top first so that we can start with our hand so that we can attach now the next thing you attach is our hand um after that you're practically going to be done and um one thing i have yet to show you is how to work uh, this ribbing which is going to be part of uh the end of all this um other than that that is basically it so this is how we just we attach we attach from the wrong side so you're going to switch to flip your work and have it like this wrong side facing the right side facing each other which means that's the same thing that you're going to do with your hand you're going to flip it as well you could get your um what are they called those um i don't remember the name but those things that you use okay i i would just use safety pins they're the one for the safety pins now once you've aligned outlined it properly you're going to attach the top portion first which is going to help you to go around but now because we want to work from we're going to work from the bottom upwards and go in circular so that you're going to get back to where we started and continue attaching the rest of the sweater we're going to twist our work to ensure that it's comfortable for us to work in and now because I'm doing it between the camera it's going to be a bit hard for me but now this is what you do you're going to secure the top and this top together then you're going to start by we're going to start by ensuring that we hide the yarn so that it's secured and safe so that you don't have to come back to do that once we're done so we start by doing that and to secure the yarn you pull and ensure you leave just a little bit of that just and just make a knot simple as that once you have that knot in uh, now you're ready to start i'll just go randomly somewhere just i'll start randomly anywhere so once this is secured on this side we're going to go under the next side like that and pull and then now on the side with the stitches it's going to be so easy because you're not eyeballing but the panel side we are definitely eyeballing that side so again you're going to go under the stitch you're going to go under the stitch insert 
it's going to come out towards the side that's facing you and pull then you go under again under the panel and pull one thing that you need to be careful about it's just really ensuring that you're only attaching one side one side of the hand and one side of the panel because we still need the arm the armhole because you kind of have to wear it so you just continue you're going to go under once again like that and pull then again under and pull this up method of stitching doesn't really have a side that should go should be the front or the back it's seamless so i love it then you go under again and pull and that is what you're just basically going to keep repeating that is the only way you're going to attach for this whole project and i honestly can't wait to see what you guys make the colors that you use and the combination with the patterns so go crazy and if you need more patterns i have several patterns in my channel because i try not to do the most basic patterns although i love the half double pattern so you just go and try try and see what you can use now on our wrist once you're done with the main portion of your hand hand that you had to do we get to work on our wrist first things first you get to make a chain of the number of inches that you need so i'll be making 20 chains plus one and that one is considered as a turning chain so i'm going to count uh 20 so i already have one two three now with your chains and your plus one what you will do you're going to um turn the chain fully like that now once it's all turned you're going to be skipping the first uh stitch the first stitch will skip that and go in through the second stitch now we're going through the back side of uh, back loops now when you get there you're going to insert your hook after you've skipped the first loop which is a turning chain insert your hook yarn over and pull through everything we are working in um slip stitch rows in a circular motion insert your hook yarn over and pull through everything you're going to continue doing that until you get to the end and then confirm you have the amount of chains that you started with i started with 20 plus one so by the end of this i need 20 chains because i used my last one as a turning chain i will meet you here at the bottom to transition once at the bottom we're going to be transitioning in um a different way so in the next available loop you're going to put your first uh, single crochet uh, slip stitch sorry you're going to put your slip stitch yarn over and pull through everything and then in the next available stitch you're going to put your second slip stitch now those are two slip stitches after that you're going to turn your work once you've done that the two slip stitches you've just uh, done you're going to skip them and go into the third slip stitch so we've done two slip stitches turned our work those two that we've done we are skipping them and going into number three so it's one two and then number three we will be working in back loops only so you insert your hook back loop is the loop farthest from you the loop um the loop close to your pointing finger not your thumb the loop farthest from you so you'll insert your hook like that yarn over and pull through everything this is to give the to give the ribbing effect um when you get to the top you're not going to be working on a single loop or just a back loop only we're going to be in all the last loops you're going to be working in both loops to make our project more of firm now continue putting back loop uh, slip stitches to the top and then back once again and i'll meet you at the bottom to refresh your mind one more time there is a loop at the bottom that you're very likely going to miss and if you do that you're going to be less you're going to have less stitches so ensure that the very last stitch you go into that it's um hard to notice now 
after that there will be a loop that is pulled do not go into that you'll be very very tempted but don't do that now in the next plain loop or stitch you're going to put your first slip stitch and then in the next plain stitch or loop put in your second slip stitch turn your work as always then you skip the first two slip stitches you've done and go back into your third slip stitch making back loop slip stitches all the way up to the bottom again now um when you get to the bottom remember you're going to put two slip stitches in the next two stitches and then turn your work and then skip so it's two slip stitches in the next two stitches turn your work skip the two stitches go into the third stitch and repeat now continue doing that and i'll meet you at the end to attach we are attaching the same same way we have attached the previous um the two panels of our sweater this is the first way you can wear the sweater the second way is adding the brim the rim like we have on our hands to cinch it in the third way is the twisty thing i did at the beginning i'm gonna put a picture here and well thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video to the end thank you and see you next time